I have a little project that I could do myself or I could send it in. I think I'd rather do it myself. I have a great mixer. This is the coolest little mixer. Uh, is the Zenix UFX1604. And I've had it since about 2015. So it's a six year old thing. And last year, while we were using it, um, just for whatever reason, it started making this really s terrible squealing noise. And I didn't want to take it apart or anything. We just, I, I had the budget at the time. So I ended up buying a new mixer, it's a huge Yamaha absolutely beautiful mixer but this Behringer I still kind of want to resurrect I hope that I can bring this back to life I sent a, an inquiry to Behringer and they wrote back and said oh it's probably the capacitor in the power supply um, I'll, I'll play you the video so you can hear what that sounds like It's definitely the power supply. So we're gonna take this thing apart and see if we could possibly fix it ourselves. If we can't, maybe then we will have it sent in. We'll see. In an email, they sent me pictures of this exact board, and they said, hey, are, do you wanna just verify that this is exactly the one? And I went component by component. I said, yep, okay, that one's there. Yep, that one's there. Same numbers, same verification. There's even a model number on the back. And I was like, yep, this is absolutely it. All right, I just got a package. Uh, looks like it's from Music Tribe in Las Vegas. Very nicely packaged. This is not... Uh, this is not going anywhere. Comes in one of those Mylar uh, static proof cases. Yeah, that is definitely it. Cool. This one has a, a, a housing, right? So we're gonna have to take the housing off of this one. The other thing that I thought might happen uh, is they shipped it uh, without a power in. There's a hot wire, a neutral wire, and a ground wire. The hot wire and the neutral wire are uh, soldered in. And this one, of course, doesn't have that. It would go here and here. Once I take this out of the housing, I'm gonna have to release these and then solder it into these two terminals. It looks like everything else, though, is exactly, exactly as the other one is. This right here is my old power supply, and one or many of those circuits are, are no good. I talked to a friend, and he said that a lot of times these capacitors will have a breaking point where they, they start flat, but then they have these like perforated tops. And if one of those or a couple of those are sticking out, that's an indicator that it has swollen on the inside. And I think it was the 80s, they started making them so that they would bubble out like this uh, instead of explode. So I'd prefer this than exploding. So this is the new one. Ta -da. I am going to take this old one out of the housing and put this new one into the housing. But before I do the housing, I am going to need to solder the power. Blue is this one, black is this one. And we're gonna solder that joint right here with ta -da -da, my soldering set. I don't have any flux, but this is a flux core. I figure that's good enough. Uh, a lot of videos will tell you to use flux, and you probably should if you have it. I just don't have it. I'm gonna set all this up so we can start unsoldering this one, and then soldering this one, and then we'll put it all together. To remind myself, I've got blue on the right, black on the left. Upside down, they're in alphabetical order. Black, blue. Glitter on that. Okay. 
So I gave these two a new cut just to give them a new lease on life. And now we'll fit them right into these holes here. Yeah, this one is nice and firm. This one can wiggle. Mm -hmm. You don't want it to wiggle. Okay, that is in, in, in. That's not going anywhere. This is a good, we did a good. I am done. The solder points look awesome. The plug is back in. I mean, even these little retainer clips are in and everything. The only thing left to do is to install this back into the mixer and give it a try. I am so excited to put this back together. Here's a brand new one. And it's in its new housing. Well, the old housing. I think we're ready to I think we're ready to do it. Let's let's put it back together. These pins fit right here. This part might get a little awkward because I need to install the ground screw and to get it off was a little weird, a little tricky. The case goes up on top like this. Okay, we'll hold the nut in place like this. We'll go like that. They get threaded first try. That's incredible. Okay, now let's put all the screws in. I wanted to point out, I thought this was funny, uh, before I put these red wings on, which really add to the look, without those wings, this kind of looks like any other mixer. <laughs> You know, it, this could be any Behringer that you see, you know, just in a, in a studio or anything. But then suddenly when you put these wings on it, it becomes the 1604. But then when you take that off, it's just a regular old mixer. The aesthetics just add to it. Hey, the moment of truth. To be honest, I'm a little nervous. But we're gonna plug this thing in and uh, and listen to it. First thing, I just want to turn it on with no, with nothing plugged in, in or out, just to see what it sounds like. See if it still has that hiss. I doubt it does because it's got a brand new power supply in it. But here goes. It was usually after about 20 seconds, 25 seconds that it would make that awful sound. And I'm not hearing it. One of the things I love about this mixer is that you can control the phantom power per channel. I know a lot of people will argue that you can turn on the phantom power globally and even a really good high quality ribbon mic, it won't damage it. I still like being able to control which one gets the actual phantom power. Okay, moment of truth. Let's plug something in and try it. Plug it in. 
bring it up to a usual gain and bring up the fader. This sounds great. Talking into the mic up at normal, normal volume, normal levels, normal everything. And we have got just an absolutely beautiful crisp sound. So uh, I think this was an absolute success. We're feeling good about it. Uh, I started with a beautiful 16 track mixer that just the power supply blew. I could test this thing. I could run it through with a, with a multimeter. I just decided, you know what, it's probably easier just to buy a new one. After trying it with both a condenser mic that needed phantom power, and actually this one's a condenser mic too, uh, that didn't need phantom power, that had a brand new battery in it, uh, listening to every channel, it sounds awesome. So it just, it's incredible. I'm gonna get to use this thing all over again. I was reading on forums and some people were saying that Behringer is notorious for their power supplies. Um, I don't know, this is a very old mixer. I bought it in 2015 and it was manufactured in 2013. Uh, so we're dealing with, you know, seven, eight year old technology. And, uh, you know, I think it worked great for as long as it did. And the power supply failed as power supplies sometimes do fail. But if you have a little bit of knowledge on how to solder, then you're able to take this apart. The biggest thing is keep track of all the screws. I know that sounds silly, but get one of those little magnetic trays so you can keep track of your screws. There are a lot of them in this thing. Most of the smaller screws are on the inside. The power supply had the smallest screws, uh, the mounting, the power supply to the actual hardware had kind of the medium sized screw and then the big fat ones that connect the sides and connect these kind of facade panels were the biggest ones. Just keep track of them so you don't lose any of them. I didn't, luckily I didn't lose any of them. If you have one of these Behringer mixers uh, or any of their mixers, I would love to hear from you. Have you had any problems with it? Uh, has it been a power supply issue? Did you give up on it? Did you just buy a new one? Um, I've had actually a, quite a few of their mixers, uh, especially those little smaller desktop mixers. I use them all the time. And I haven't had problems with any of them, just this, the power supply, and I'm glad I was able to fix it. It was just this one little problem. Luckily, when I talked to the people at Music Tribe, it's kind of a conglomerate of Music Tribe and Behringer, he said, hey, you know what? We, we have that power supply and I'm happy to get it to you, but just know there's no warranty on this. And I said, oh yeah, of course. You know, I'm, I'm happy to see if it, if it works. And luckily, you know, luckily it did work. So we're feeling good about this. I'm gonna call this one a wild success. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. I'd love to hear from you. What are some audio issues you guys have had, especially with mixers? Did you fix it yourself? Did you send it in? Um, this one, in, in this case, we got lucky enough we could just do it ourselves. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, share it with a friend. If you have any questions on how I did this or you want to see things in future videos, drop them in the comments. I'd love to hear it. See ya.